Hey, what is up mortals welcome to season 1 part 4 of what if Deku had super speed now with that out of the way, let's get into the story. The rest of the first week of school went by without anything exciting happening. As Izuku entered the classroom, he saw Minda talking with Aizawa in a hushed tone at the front of the room. Izuku went to his assigned seat and sat down, waiting for the rest of the class to show up. Katsuki showed up a few minutes later. Ten minutes later, the rest of the class started entering the room. Once everyone was at their assigned seats, Aizawa moved to the front of the room. Today, you guys will be picking a class president, Aizawa sleepily said. The entire class excitedly cheered. Many of the students excitedly commented on the fact that it was a normal school activity for once. Before we begin Midoriya, Bakugo, Ida, Kirishima, Asui, Ashido, Yayarazu, and Yuraka, please head to All Might's office. There is something All Might needs to discuss with you guys, Aizawa said without a second thought. There is a leveling system in the class. The group you want to join is All Might's group. Power alone won't allow you to join the group. The class began to talk amongst themselves as the group started to leave the room and head to All Might's office. As they left the room, Aizawa's eyes turned red as he told everyone to quiet down. They walked in silence for a few minutes. Ah, uh, it's too quiet. The pink-skinned girl with horns on her head groaned. Why do you think All Might called us to his office? It's quite obvious. It has to do with the training. The blue-haired boy with glasses said. Hey, glasses, there's eight of us. All Might said he would select seven of us. Katsuki grumbled. I agree with Ida. Sensei did say there was a level system in the class. The girl with long black hair tied in a ponytail said excitedly. Given that it took a week to decide who All Might wanted to train, it's possible that one student was able to raise their level. Don't you guys think it's strange All Might didn't pick that badass, Todoroki kid? Hiroshima asked to no one in particular. Not really. All Might wasn't looking for raw power. Ribbit, the girl with green hair said. He tries to keep his distance from us. All Might probably saw that skipped him because of that. Ribbit, the eight students ended up discussing what criteria All Might felt was important in becoming a hero. As they got to All Might's office, he came out and greeted them. I was getting worried that something happened to you students on your way here, All Might said with a chuckle. We ended up debating what you considered important for a hero to have, Izuku muttered. Don't let that bother you any longer. I will explain why I selected you guys, All Might said with a smile on his face. I thought you said you were picking seven of us, not eight. Katsuki angrily muttered. Originally, that was the plan, but I got distracted saving people. By the time I had enough free time to decide, young Yuraka had leveled up. All Might said as he motioned the students into his office. The goal is that everyone reaches my group. All Might's office was a spacious room with hardly anything on the plain white walls. There were a few potted plants next window on the far side of the room. There are two tables in the room. One table was a large brown desk with papers stacked on top of it on the left side of the room. The other was a small glass table located in the center of the room. All Might sat down by the glass table and motioned for the rest of the students to sit down. After a few seconds of students looking around awkwardly, they sat down on the opposite side of the table from All Might. A hero has to be able to create an environment where people feel at ease. People have to know that everything will be alright, All Might said with a smile. One of the reasons I smile is to trick the fear inside of me. If a hero displays fear, the people who are being saved won't be able to relax. What is scary enough to scare you? The symbol of peace. Kirishima asked in complete shock. Plenty of things young Kirishima. All Might said with his smile fading briefly. A hero doesn't simply know his fear, he overcomes it. Everyone has something they fear. The hard part is overcoming that fear. Ah, so you selected us based on our ability to overcome obstacles? Ashido asked. Incorrect. I selected you because you showed incredible promise in three main categories. All Might said happily. Originally, I was going to see if you could overcome adversity. However, everyone in the class had to deal with some adversity just to get into UA. I decided to test you guys on how well you worked other people, how friendly you were to other people, and you were willing to help other people. A true hero focuses on helping people even if they have to put some of their goals on hold. How did you score us then? I ended up alone during the battles in the first week of school, Yeyarazu asked in a curious tone. I never said that I was only looking at how you performed during the battles. I talked to your other teachers to find out how you acted in other classes, All Might said happily. Those battles were mainly to confirm who had the makings of a good hero and who had the makings of a great hero. So, why did you select us? Surely Bakugo's anger issues lowered his score, Ribbit? Basui asked curiously. Young Bakugo's personality was concerning. However, everyone has their own challenges they need to face. Bakugo should try and act nicer to people, All Might said with a smile. Young Midoriya needs to be more confident in himself. Ida is far too rigid in the way he acts or thinks. I selected you eight because you showed you could overcome your flaws to help other people. Beyond that, you showed the potential to be great heroes. So, you selected based on how we acted during the first week of school. 
You also think abilities alone don't make a great hero. Izuku started to mutter to himself. So, saving people isn't enough. You also have to put their mind at ease. Deku, stop muttering, it's annoying. When do we meet up for training? Katsuki asked in frustration since they were missing class for a meaningless conversation. Starting tomorrow after school, I want you to meet me at the field. I will be training you for two hours each day, All Might said. As young Bekugo and young Midoriya learned, I won't be staying in the form the public knows me by. A friend of mine might be in town for some hero work within the next couple of weeks. He will probably help out if he has the time. That's awesome. I hope your friend has the time then to help train us, Kirishima said excitedly. He must be a badass like you. While it's true that this is exciting for you guys, we have discussed this enough. Unless you have something you want to ask, please head back to class, All Might said happily. The students looked at each other before shaking their heads. They excitedly ran back to class. The prospect of having someone All Might was friends with helping teach was exciting. As they got back to class, they heard various people yelling at each other. Ada was the first one to react. Ada opened the classroom door and walked to the front of the classroom. Everyone, quiet down, Ada said in an angry tone of voice as he waved his right arm up down. Is okay sir, if we do a vote to decide who should be class president, I don't care, just make a decision. Before the day ends, Aizawa said as he climbed into his yellow sleeping bag. Very well, sir, Ada said, I will not let you down. Each person will write their vote on a piece of paper. You can't vote for yourself. The person with the most votes will be declared the class president. The other seven students quietly went to their seats and sat down. Ida waited until everyone quieted down before he continued. Once the votes have been counted, the winner will be announced when we come back from lunch, Ada said as he started to pass out small pieces of paper so that everyone could write down a name. Ada wrote down his vote and waited until everyone else voted. As soon as each person finished, Ada collected the votes in a small square box. The bell rang to let the students out for lunch. Izuku met up with Yuraka and Ada as they went towards the lunchroom. Pro Hero Lunch Rush was making the school lunches. I sure hope you get the job, Ida, Yuraka said happily. You certainly look the part with the glasses and all. Yuraka, that's not a good reason to pick a class president, Izuku muttered. Before anything else could be said, an alarm rang out through the school. The students very quickly started rushing towards the exits as they figured out it was the alarm to warn the school about intruders. Before we get back into the story, I would like to say that we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes over the hard facts of the anime presented. Now in case, you guys didn't know, we have a third channel called We the Celestial Naruto What If. We the Celestial Naruto What If mainly focuses on our Naruto What If series. If you are interested in content like this, please go check the description below or click the eye icon in the top right corner. Now with that out of the way, let's get back into the story. Izuku, Yuraka, and Ada were able to get into the hallway before everyone stopped moving. They got stuck near a window facing the entrance of the school. Ada was the first to notice that a bunch of reporters made it past the front gate of UA. Ada, in turn, showed the other two. Kai's look, Ida said with a satisfied look on his face. It was the reporters who triggered the alarm. Does that mean this is a false alarm? Izuku stuttered. Yuraka, would you be able to use your quirk on me so we could let everyone else know? Ida said as he tried to come up with a plan to help calm everyone down. Sure, any particular reason why? Yuraka asked. If you make me float, I get to the front of the line and tell everyone that it's alright, Ida said with more confidence than he felt towards his plan. Alright, Yuraka said as she touched Ida and activated her quirk. Engine, boost, Ida said once he was above the crowd of people. Even though his quirk causing him to spin through the air Ida was able to get to the front of the line. It took Ida a second to get everyone's attention. Everyone, please, calm down. The press was able to get into UA. Ida shouted to make sure everyone could hear him. It is just a false alarm. Once the alarm was deactivated, everyone started to calm down. After a few minutes, the faculty started sending everyone back to class. All right, I counted the votes. Tenya Ada will be the class president, and Yeirazu will be the vice president, Aizawa said in a monotone voice. With that settled in mind of finally returning to class, I want everyone to change into their hero costumes and head to the bus. The class congratulated Ada on becoming the class president with some of them referring to Ada as emergency existing. Duh. A few minutes later, the class was dressed in their hero costumes and waiting next to the bus. Ada was busy trying to get everyone to line up in an orderly fashion. Despite his best efforts, the class just ignored him. The bus doors opened up, revealing that the bus had an atypical layout wasting Ada's efforts as everyone got on. Both Yuraka and Izuku gave Ada a look of sympathy as they got on the bus. Once the bus left UA, everyone started to discuss who would be a popular hero once they graduated. Back Hugo has a powerful quirk, but he doesn't seem like he'll be all popular, Asui noted. He's far too angry. 
What did you say, you damn frog? Katsuki shouted in anger. See, Asui said and pointed at Katsuki in response to what he said. All Might told you to work on your temper, Kirishima said as he put an arm around Katsuki. Where are we headed, anyway? The conversation shifted as everyone tried to figure out where they were going. About ten minutes later, they got their answer as the bus pulled up to a large building with a rounded roof. Today, we will be practicing how to be heroes, Aizawa said in a bored tone as bus doors open. Everyone follow me. Aizawa then walked off the bus as the class started to follow. The class then stopped at the door. The doors began to slide into the walls allowing everyone to enter. Once the doors fully opened, the class was greeted by a person in a white space suit. 13. Wasn't All Might supposed to be here? Aizawa asked as he looked around the facility. He had too much hero work, 13 said. He wasn't able to make it, unfortunately. Aizawa led the class into the facility. He stopped walking once he was close to 13. Aizawa waited until the doors closed behind his students before he addressed the class. The facility we just entered is Unexpected Simulation Joint or USJ for short, Aizawa explained calmly. Today, you will be practicing how to conduct rescue efforts here properly. Before we get started, there are a few things we need to go over, 13 said. The class soon lost its eagerness as 13 slowly began to give the students a speech. As the speech was drawing to a close, a black portal started to appear behind the two teachers. Aizawa was the first one to notice since he was the closest to the stairs. Class stick together, Aizawa ordered. 13 protect the students. It seems we have some unwanted guests. We apologize for the unwanted intrusion heroes, a voice said from the portal that was almost fully formed. We decided to invite ourselves here. The portal slowly started to disappear. People began appearing as the portal slowly condensed into the rough shape of a person wearing a nice suit and a metal brace around his neck. Once the portal disappeared, 40 guys were standing at the bottom of the stairs. It would appear that All Might is not here at the moment. Tamira, Kirajiri informed a guy with blue hair. What should we do? So, this is the so-called hero training grounds. The blue-haired man responded irritably as he scratched his neck with his right hand. All Might was supposed to be here. I wonder if the symbol of peace will show up if we kill his students. Students start heading towards the entrance of the facility. Aizawa order as he put yellow goggles over his eyes. We will fight the villains. Now go. Sir, you can't possibly fight all of them by yourself, Izuku stammered in fear. If you want to be a hero, you can't rely on your quirk. Aizawa responded as he started heading down the stairs to fight the intruders. The moment Aizawa was at the bottom of the stairs, a group of villains tried to use their quirks. However, nothing happened when they did. Aizawa used this opportunity to use his scarf to catch three villains. Aizawa then used his scarf to slam the three villains into the ground. Aizawa then released the three villains and caught another villain in his scarf. He then used the villain as a meat shield. He then proceeded to elbow the nearest villain in the face. One of the villains realized who they were fighting. The villain then announced that they were fighting the pro-hero eraser head. While this was going on 13, was trying to get everyone to evacuate USJ. Katsuki and Kirishima charged at the villain in the suit. The villain easily dodged the two as they tried to attack him. Once the villain dodged the attack, he encased them in a portal and sent them to a different location in the facility. Kirajiri then used the portal to bring him to the top of the stairs. Once Kirajiri was at the top of the stairs, he used his quirk to envelop the students there. He was only partially able to succeed. Most of the class had been teleported to random locations in the facility, leaving only a few remaining students and 13 there. Ada, you must escape and inform the rest of UA about what's going on here. 13 said as they activated their quirk. Black Hole, as Kurajiri tried to attack the remaining students, he was caught by 13's quirk. The force that was being produced was so strong that nothing could escape it. The worst thing about pro heroes is when they live up to the hype, Shigaraki said irritably, as he scratched his neck again. A villain with a mutant-type quirk rushed at Aizawa. Aizawa moved out of the way as the villain came towards him. The villain then threw a straight right punch at Aizawa. Aizawa used the punch to bring the villain closer to him. Aizawa then grabbed the villain's head. As Aizawa was bringing the villain's head down, he drove his left knee upwards into the villain's face. Kirajiri seeing that 13 was sucking everything up, started to open a portal behind 13. 13 was caught off guard this and failed to shut off their quirk in time. Due to this, a massive hole was torn into their costume. Ader ran towards the door in an attempt to follow 13's orders. You heroes were foolish enough to discuss your plans in front of us villains, Kirajiri said calmly. Do you really think that we would let you achieve your plan? Kirajiri started to charge at Ida. However, he was caught by a tall student with multiple arms. Ida continued to race towards the door as his classmates tried to hold the villain back. A few seconds later, the villain escaped the student's hold and tried to catch Ida. However, Yuraka was able to touch the metal part of the villain's costume and activated her quirk. With the villain floating, Ida was able to make it to the door. Ida then shoved the right door to the right. He was able to hold the door long enough to get out of the building. 
Once he was out of the building, he activated his quirk and ran to Yue. 13 is down, Kirijiri said once he used a portal to appear to the right of Shigaraki. Most of the students are scattered across the facility. I was unable to stop one of the students from escaping. You're lucky you're our way in and out of here, Shigaraki growled. Otherwise, I would have turned you to dust for letting that happen. Aizawa was finally able to find a gap between the villains and charged at Shigaraki. Aizawa threw an elbow at Shigaraki's chest as he started to blink. Shigaraki caught the attack with his right hand. At that moment, the skin on Aizawa's elbow started to decay. Aizawa finished blinking and stared at Shigaraki. Long battles like this don't really suit you, eraser head, Shigaraki taunted. You shouldn't overexert yourself, eraser head. Aizawa jumped back and produced to use his uninjured arm to wrap his scarf around a villain that was charging at him. To Aizawa's right, a villain swung a mace at him. Aizawa swung the captured villain to his right. Pro heroes are on their way, Kirijiri calmly said as he watched the fight. What do you want to do, Tamura? It's a shame to have come this far without achieving anything, Shigaraki complained. Boy, Eraser Head, do you think I'm the final boss? Eraser Head looked over at Shigaraki as he was dodging the last few remaining villains. Eraser Head sent a straight right kick into the villain that had just attacked him. All me to introduce you to the anti symbol of peace. Shigaraki said menacingly as he looked at the hulking brute behind him. He's the final boss. Aizawa looked at the hulking brute that was standing behind Shigaraki. It had dark skin, it had a beak with teeth in it for a mouth, and its brain was exposed. Aizawa blinked and ready himself to fight the hulking beast. We designed him to kill All Might specifically, Shigaraki said menacingly as he scratched his neck. It seems you defeated my underlings are you ready for round two? Aizawa just stared at the hulking beast. Despite the blue-haired villain's comments, the hulking beast stayed still. It hadn't reacted or moved since the fighting began, almost as if it was waiting for some sort of command before it would do something. Namu, Shigaraki said calmly. Kill them. At that moment, the thing Shigaraki called a Namu started to react. At first, it moved its head until it focused on Aizawa. Its entire body began to twitch. It then moved in front of Shigaraki and Kirijiri. Each step had enough force to crack the ground beneath it. Once it was in front of the other two villains, it took off towards Aizawa. The Namu disappeared in the blink of an eye leaving only a small crater in the ground where it previously stood. Aizawa closed his eyes as a gust of wind slammed into him. When he reopened his eyes, the villain wasn't in front of him. It took Aizawa a second to realize that the brute was standing behind him. Aizawa looked up at the terrifying monster as it started to move its left arm up. Aizawa turned around and leaped back. However, he did it a moment too late as the hand descended in the blink of an eye. Thank you all for watching the video to the end. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. On behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank the writer of this video and editors for this video. Their details will be in the description. If you're a voice actor, editor or writer, or you're interested in becoming one of those, go to the Discord that is in the description of this video and hit up the head of one of those areas. We're always looking for members to join us. That's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested and hit that like button if you liked the video. Until next time, peace out mortals, have a fantastic day.